Money exploits in speedrunning can refer to players abusing specific things in order to generate fat stacks of in-game currency. These exploits generally lead to purchasing the best weapons and gear in a relatively short period of time, or just being able to complete the game faster than intended. For example, in Animal Crossing for the GameCube, the all debt speedrun is entirely based around duplicating autumn medals, which are then sold and used to pay off all debts. This route also involves setting the console to a specific date before starting a new file and time traveling between debts. With these strats, it's possible to complete the game in less than 35 minutes. Without any of these strats, you're looking at multiple hours of gameplay. This is just the tip of the iceberg, there are many speedruns of similar strats, and today we'll be going over some of them. I hope you all enjoy. If you've watched any Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom speedruns in the past couple of years, then it's no surprise that I'm featuring it because of a trick called Ski Ball Abuse. Ski Ball Abuse, or SBA, is a trick that generates shiny objects at a rapid rate. They're primarily used to purchase the 8 golden spatulas from Mr. Krabs and unlock various shortcuts throughout the game. In the level Goo Lagoon, there's a skee-ball machine that Spongebob can play by using his Bubble Bull power-up. Depending where the Bubble Bull lands, Spongebob is awarded a certain number of shiny objects. However, you can completely abuse this. When taking control of Patrick, you can pick up stone tikis found elsewhere in the Goo Lagoon Pier, and throw them at the skee-ball machine. However, this is easier said than done. Patrick needs to be standing on a specific part of the ramp, and his tiki throws can deviate left or right. The tikis need to land in a specific spot in the machine so that Spongebob's bubble bull can pass back and forth through the trigger repeatedly, activating it over and over. The best results yield 900 shiny objects per second, which is guaranteed with a 2 tiki setup. However, world record attempts go for a 1 tiki setup, which is significantly harder but can save 10 to 20 seconds. Compared to previous farming strats, SBA was initially timed to save 3.5 minutes in any percent and around 8 minutes in 100%. Since 2018, major routing work has been implemented in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 100% speedrun. The current world record is 18 hours, so shaving as much time off the run as possible has become an entire project for the community. This project is known as Gold Rush, which is run by Swiffy22, a Breath of the Wild glitch hunter, router, and community admin. There was a specific trick added to the route back in fall of 2020 that not only makes the early game more consistent, but allows for infinite rupee farming. The trick was initially dubbed the Rupee Printer, but it's more officially known as Dynamic Object Glitch. The trick involves manipulating a guardian to spawn infinite parts, which can then be sold, and allows for players to skip many of the sources for earning money, which includes chess, collecting 185 apples for an exploit with a compendium, and so on. When a guardian is first spawned, it has a parameter that determines if it has dropped parts. The default state is no, because it's spawned upright and waiting for Link to tip it over. Once Link does tip it over, a flag is set to change the parameter to yes, However, if Link moves the Guardian two grid units away, those parameters are reset and no longer update. The game believes the Guardian hasn't dropped parts, but since the flag can't be updated to stop the parts from spawning, they spawn infinitely. From worst to best in terms of the parts that spawn from the Guardian, there are screws, springs, gears, shafts, and cores. And runners will have to adapt their run based on what's given. Since parts are spawning in at such a fast rate and collide with one another, runners will also need to consider lag. About 3 minutes is spent collecting from the Guardian, so there's a balance of this covers the money I need, and this won't cause my game to have lag spikes. This trick isn't necessarily a huge time save, but rather allows runners to buy hundreds of arrows within the first couple hours of a run, which are the main resource used to kill mini bosses like Hinoxes and Taylises. Before we move on with the rest of the video, I want to let you all know about an ongoing speedrun tournament in Sackboy Big Adventure. Sackboy is a cute 3D platformer from the Little Big Planet series, and this month I partnered with PlayStation to let you all know about Sackboy challenges where you can compete against other speedrunners and content creators to win unique in-game rewards depending on how you place. I've included some discount codes in the description to get it for 50% off, but if you want to use the codes, you'll have to act fast as they'll only be active for a few more days. In the background you can see my fastest completion of this month's level, press for time, and I've also posted a video on my second channel where you might be able to pick up some strats. I've had a lot of fun speedrunning this game so far, and the competition for top times is pretty intense. If you think I'm fast at this game, you should see some of the top times because they're nearly 5 seconds quicker. But don't worry, if you're just going for the best rewards possible to fall under the diamond ranking, you'll only need a 15 and a half second time as of the making of this video, which to be fair is still an impressive time. My main advice for beginners is to make sure you're rolling as much as possible and avoid being airborne when you can, since it can slow you down. There are timers located all over the level, and it's worth it to collect all of them to save time, especially the two that are sneakily hid towards the end. My time currently stands at 11.363 seconds, and I challenge you guys to try and beat it. 
feel free to stop by my live stream on Twitch to let me know what kind of times you guys achieve, as I'll be streaming this game for a couple more days. Also, in order to access a challenge, you can either go straight to it from the PlayStation dashboard, or just access the Nintendo Night Trials in-game, which you can find in the overworld of the game, and press triangle once you're in it to access PlayStation tournaments. Good luck to everyone, and again, make sure you take full advantage of those discount codes while they last. In Castlevania Symphony of the Night, there's something called the Shop Glitch, which allows runners to make fat stacks in seconds. There's a few ways to perform this glitch, but the most common way is to use a fairy. This is done by going into the Relics menu and equipping the fairy card, which summons it. Once you cancel out of this menu, the fairy will start talking to you. While this is happening, you want to enter the librarian's room for the first time. This will start the librarian's dialogue, and if you skip this cutscene by hitting start, the pause menu will be open, which under normal play should not be allowed to happen. For some reason this works because the librarian and fairy's dialogue overlaps. The pause menu is useful in this section because you're able to equip an item, but then sell it anyways. So a way to make a ton of gold is to equip a gem such as a garnet, and then sell it to the shop. After you equip it and sell it to the shop, you should have zero garnets. But if you open the shop again, you'll notice that there is one garnet that can be sold, except it's not one garnet. There are E5 garnets, which is equal to 255, effectively causing an underflow. From here you can sell as many as you would like, and the gold is used to purchase the most overpowered equipment in the game, such as mana prisms, buffalo stars, and a duplicator. The shop glitch is used in nearly every category that allows glitches, and saves a little over a minute. In the Generation 1 Pokemon games, there's a major glitch called Item Underflow. This is a sub-glitch of item duplication, where we duplicate 255 of an item. To set this up, we use a catching glitch known as Trainer Fly. If you find a trainer with a max sight range that isn't normally facing south, walk towards them and press the pause menu as you move into range of them. You can then fly, teleport, or dig away. In this case, we use Abra to teleport away. When we return to the original route where we teleported from, a Pokemon will appear, and the special value of the last Pokemon encountered determines which one will show up. In order to duplicate items, we need the glitch Pokemon known as Missing No to show up, since encountering it causes the sixth slot of your bag to be increased by 128. The way to do this is to encounter the specific black belt in Saffron City Gym, and Sir Machop has a special value of 31. 31 corresponds with Missing No, so once we return to the original route we teleported from, we'll encounter it. We then swap a stackable item such as a Pokeball to the sixth slot of our bag, do the encounter, and now we have a glitch Pokemon count. We'll toss a couple of them since the glitch only works if your item count is less than 128. After repeating the entire process again, we can now do item underflow. By tossing some items and doing some item swaps, we can underflow our bag and PC to 255 item slots. The latter 200 slots in both menus point to different areas of memory such as money and game corner coins. And messing with them is useful in catch them all speedruns because it allows us to gain a huge amount of currency. As Shenanigans demonstrates here, this particular slot of memory in the PC is for game corner coins, and by simply tossing it, we now have square square zero zero coins, which is just a glitchy amount that goes past the game's coin cap. Now we can afford expensive Pokemon like Porygon, which is otherwise a pain to get by normal means. As for money, we set up Inventory Underflow, which is the same process as PC Underflow, in order to produce these glitchy J items. They sell for a ton of money, and now we have the ability to purchase anything. There are many other things you can do with Item Underflow, and utilizing this glitch saves about 1 hour, whereas the two aforementioned money glitches save about 5-10 to 10 minutes. In Family Guy Back to the Multiverse, there's a glitch used in the Any% percent Run during the 5th level, No Cheese Please. In this level, you're tasked with assassinating Mayor McCheese, which requires you to traverse your way to the top of the book depository building and shoot Mayor McCheese with a sniper rifle shot. When you start the level, his model is deloaded until you reach the designated area, which would normally mean that he cannot be killed until you reach the top of the building. However, his hitbox is always active from the moment you start the level, meaning you can pop a 180 no-scope on him and end the level in about 3 seconds. This awards a player $499 for each completion and is heavily used in the 100% run. Runners grind this level at the end, and depending on how much money was earned throughout, about fifty dollars to $60,000 will be needed. With some quick maths, this means the level needs to be completed anywhere from 100 to 120 times. The money goes towards buying all the multiplayer characters, all multiplayer maps, all character costumes, all attribute upgrades, and all weapons. Since its addition in the 100% route, the trick is estimated to save anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Imagine playing a game called Drug Dealer Simulator, except you're not allowed to sell any drugs. This is known as Drugless, and the speedrun we're looking at is level 25. At this level you unlock Fentanyl, which is the last unlockable in the game, so this is defined as 
The best way to earn experience points is by giving out drug samples to people, but since we don't sell drugs, we instead give out 5 gram packets of salt. The people who want samples are randomly spawned in the world, and the police think that repackaged salt is illegal, so you have to watch out for them. In order to maximize on your experience gain, you'll want to buy properties to increase your max client cap and decrease the time between deals to your clients. Now since we're not making an absolute fortune off 5 gram packets of salt, we'll need to find an alternative way to afford these properties, and thankfully there's a way to do this. First you want to save your game, go to an ATM, store the ATM screen while loading the previous save file, and the game will let you withdraw $1000 each time you do this. Then you save again, and rinse and repeat. For some reason when you do this, the game doesn't check your bank balance and you basically get infinite money. The speedrunning community for this game is comfortable in saying this glitch saves about 10 hours in level 25 drug lists. And to put that in perspective, the current world record is 8 hours and 45 minutes. So if you were to obtain money by other means such as RNG drops in the world, you would be looking at a nearly full day to complete this run. In the truck simulator game 18 Wheels of Steel, Pedal to the Metal, the goal is to make money by delivering cargo across America, and you can pretty much skip the entire last phase of the game by sleeping. The game includes a fatigue simulation, and your driver can become tired and experience blackouts until they are rested. There are all sorts of rest spots in the world, and you can use them indefinitely in 6 hour intervals. During the last phase, you can hire drivers to complete deliveries. If you spam the 6 hour time skips at a rest stop, their deliveries will be sped up as well. Hiring all available drivers while using a rest stop to skip time is the easiest way to earn $10 million, which is a win condition for the any% percent employee speedrun. It's uncertain as to exactly how much time this exploit saves in a speedrun, but it's easily multiple hours. While this is more of an oversight from the devs, it's still hilarious that the quickest way to beat the last phase is to literally sleep your way to the top. In Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, it's possible to trick the game into letting you sell a ton of cheap items for the price of a valuable item. Referred to as simply the money glitch, it's a frame perfect trick where if you sell the last of an item, there's one frame where the game still treats the object above it as the item that was just sold. So in this example clip, the one and only shroom badge is sold for 132 coins. Since there are no more of that item to be sold, the game will place a new item in your selection. In this case, the green shells. If you press A or X on a specific frame after selling the shroom badge, you'll be able to sell your green shells for the price of a shroom badge. Using this glitch just one time can give enough coins for the entire any% percent speedrun, which takes a little over 2.5 hours to complete. As for the amount of time this saves in speedruns, it hasn't really been tested since it's not something that cuts down the time in half or anything. It pretty much just eliminates having to run around the overworld for items and money, and alleviates certain routing and menuing burdens. In Breath of Fire 2, there's ways to earn millions right from the start of the game. When you start a new game, it sees your characters in the following order. Our two characters of interest are Ryu and Sten. You're able to move characters to different slots, and it's important we move Ryu in slot 2. This is because we'll be doing something called the Switch Glitch. Basically, characters affect other characters that are 4 slots ahead. Ryu in slot 2 will affect slot 6, which is Sten, and we can abuse an item that Sten possesses. Ryu is the only character at the start of the game who we can get an accessory for, which is critical if we're making this glitch possible. When you open up the armory, and then open up the switch menu, by hitting A and then B one frame later, the game gets confused. It references Sten's nature whip, which we're able to sell for 90k. You can do this as many times as you would like, but we only need about 1.7 million zenny. 900,000 of that will go towards paying off the chief of the circus in order to free a character named Spar, and that alone saves 12 minutes in the speedrun. What's funny is that the game never intended for you to have that kind of money, since the alternative to freeing Spar is to find the chief a new attraction for a circus. The remainder of the money will be used to purchase a ton of consumable items and the best gear at the shops, and also fire rocks which are used to kill random encounters in the mid-game. In addition, we don't have to go around collecting extra items to sell, so utilizing the switch glitch saves roughly 50 minutes in total, which is huge since the current world record for the good ending speedrun is 6 hours and 15 minutes. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like as it's the best way to show support. Beescape and I have a lot of content planned for October, and we're both really looking forward to putting it all out, so thank you all for being so patient with us, as we've both been extremely busy outside of content creation. Also, a huge thanks to all of the people supporting over on Patreon. Reminder that I'm still posting over on my second channel regularly, and streaming several times per week on Twitch, so make sure you guys go follow me over on those platforms for additional speedrunning content. That's about all I have to say for today's video, make sure you guys check out Sackboy Challenges on PlayStation, subscribe for more speedrunning related content, and as always, I hope you all have a beautiful life.